Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Code This. So in this video we're going to be building this video game themed type homepage here. And really quick, I'll just scroll through it. There's a few different sections here. Recent reviews, some posts and comments. If this was a blog type site, that would be handy. Um, it was a free template designed by colorlib.com and I, I also pulled all of the images from colorlib.com. So I just want to be very clear, this is not my work. I just found a free template that I liked and I'm gonna show you guys kind of how to build it from scratch, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And also it will be responsive. So as the screen gets smaller, you'll see that the nav menu collapses down into this hamburger menu. And we also have some kind of resizing of the images and the text to kind of work well on mobile. And since this is a pretty large project, I'm going to be moving pretty quick, so feel free to pause the video if you fall behind or are trying to follow along coding it yourself. So, Alright, so I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, and real quick, I'll just pull up... I have a folder here with an images directory, and this is all of the images I pulled from colorlib.com to use on this project. Other than that, it's a blank folder. So we're going to do this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and open this folder in um, VS Code. All right, expand it. There's the images. Let's go ahead and create an index.html file. And then let's go ahead and create a new folder. We'll call it CSS. Whoops, that got created in the images directory. Let's go ahead and delete that. We want the CSS folder to be outside of the images directory. There we go. And then inside of the CSS directory, we're going to create a file styles.css. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and pull up the index.html file. And the first thing we're going to need is a doc type and then Oops. HTML tag, oh. a head tag. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and give it a title. Call it Game Warrior Template. And then we'll do a meta tag of the viewport. Content equals width equals device width. And this is going to be for mobile responsive. I would recommend you kind of look into what this meta tag means if you care to. And I'm also going to go ahead and just pull this over to the left so we have more room. And then I'll get rid of that. Maybe pull this over a bit too so we can see more of the code. Okay, so there's the head. And then let's go ahead and add our style sheet. So it's going to be link tag with an href of CSS styles.css row equals style sheet type equals text over CSS that'll add our st style sheet onto the HTML page then let's go ahead and create the, the, the body tag next and then the header so this header is going to be the, this entire top part with the black background so first things first we notice that we have and where did my nav go that's weird there may be a bug that we'll have to eventually fix but We'll notice that we have three kind of pieces to this header. We got the logo, the nav links, and then the login register button. So I'm going to put all those into a flex box or flex container. There's a few ways we could do this, but I prefer to use flex box. And we'll go ahead and create a div with class of logo to hold the logo, and it's going to be a link. We'll just link it to nothing for now since we're only building this one page in this tutorial. And then we're going to give it the Game Warrior logo. And again, I pulled these images from colorlib.com. There we go. Let me just see here. Let's pull this over a little bit more. Oops. There we go. 
Okay, so we have our logo. Next, let's create a nav tag, and this is just gonna hold all of our navigation links. So, and also the hamburger menu. So let's go ahead and create the hamburger menu. I'll give it a ID of nav toggle class of hamburger menu. And then inside of the button, we have these three horizontal strips, right? So we're gonna give those, those are gonna be a span tag with class of strip. And we have three of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this three times, there we go. And then next we'll have an unordered list, which will be the actual nav links themselves. So I'll call this nav menu container. And then inside list item, each one of these is gonna be a hyperlink. Again, going nowhere for now since we have no other pages. And I'll just go ahead and copy this several more times. We have home, games, blog, forums, contact. So home, games, blog, forums, contact. And then after the nav, we're going to have a hyperlink for the login register button. So I'll give it an ID of login register button and the text is login slash register. And that pretty much will do it for the header. So let's go ahead and move on and let's create a main tag. And this is gonna basically hold all of the main content of this site. So everything excluding the header and the footer at the bottom. So that's gonna be in the main. So the first thing we have is this hero image section. So let's give it a section ID of hero image. And then in there, let's create a div. I'll say class of hero marketing text. And that's gonna be basically this kind of little marketing text on top of this main hero image of this purple monkey. So div class goes hero marketing text. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing will be an H1 tag, which is the best games out there. So the best and then Notice how the word games is a different color than the the rest of this header. So let's put that in a span tag so we can call out to that in the CSS and change the color of that word out there. The best games out there. So that's the H1 tag. Next, let's put it in an H5 and that'll be this text below it. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm not gonna retype it. All right. That's the H1, it's H5, and then we have, let me scroll back over here. Then we have this read more button. So let's go ahead and create that. Oops. So button, read more. And that should do it for this hero image section because we're gonna be adding this large image as a background image in our CSS. That's why you're not seeing it here in the HTML code. So that's that section. The, if we scroll down here, we the next one is this kind of news little small bar down here. So let's go ahead and create another section. Let's call it latest news. And then again, I'm gonna use a <clears throat> flex container because we have an item on the left and an item on the right. There's various ways we can do something like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use a flex container and then latest news is going to be scroll this back over. There we go. So on smaller screens, it kind of disappears. So let me go ahead and pull this over. Okay, so <clears throat> latest news is gonna have this little latest news yellow box to the left and then the actual news item itself to the right. So we use a Flexbox container. So inside of that, we'll have an put it in an H5 tag, latest news. Under that, let's create a 
div. Let's call this latest news container. And then inside of that, let's say div class of latest news item. <clears throat> and that's going to be this div with a black background here. <clears throat> so let's give it a span class equals badge and new. And then the word is new. That's going to be this pink square here. And then underneath that, another span span called latest news text and then uh, Lauren there's some there's a demet, just a bunch of gibberish text all right so and let's see what else anything else for this section latest news nope that's it for that section so next we have this kind of four boxes. So if, if I pull this over again to a larger screen, they, they're they going to sit horizontally. And as we go to a smaller screen, they kind of collapse down. So let's go ahead and create that section. So I'll say section, <clears throat> I guess we can call it game type boxes, whatever. Again, I'm going to use a flex container to lay out these four game type boxes. So the first one in the first item in our flex container is going to be just a div class of box and then I'm going to say new and then inside of each one also note that it's kind of a darker shade over the images. So the way we're going to accomplish that is by adding a div with a class of shade and then we'll handle in in the CSS will make it so that it kind of hovers over the image and gives it that darker look, darker effect. Next, let's create this uh, badge. So again, we'll just say class equals badge new. We're going to be reusing this exact same span as up here for this badge. They're basically the exact same. So badge new and then the word new. And then under that span, div class equals contents. That's going to be all the stuff inside of it. <clears throat> Let's give the header titles an H4. Go ahead and just copy this. And then the text will be in a paragraph. So let's go ahead and just add that. And then we have these comments down here, which I'll create them as hyperlinks. So a href equals, no, they're not going to link anywhere at this moment. Class equals comments, three comments for this box. And that basically creates one of the boxes. And you can see that we have four of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this box three more times. One, two, three. Oh, and the indentation got a little messed up there. Let's just pull it back out. Okay, so we have our four boxes, but they're a little bit different from one another. The next one is this green strategy badge. So let's go ahead and change that. This will be box strategy. We'll still keep this shade to give it that darker effect. Let's change the badge though to have a class of strategy. Um, everything else should stay the same. The next one is role playing. So we'll say RPG and then badge RPG. Everything else stays the same. The next one is racing. So box racing and badge racing. All right. And that should do it for that section. So next we have this recent games section with these three boxes. So let's go ahead and create that. So section ID equals recent games. Oops. And then inside we have this header text. 
which is going to be an H1 recent games. Okay, great. And then underneath that, we're going to also use a flex box for these three boxes. So let's create a flex container here. It's just a div with a class of flex. And then let's create the first box. So div class equals box. And then inside we have, again, these same kind of badges, same color, same look. So let's go ahead and reuse those again. So span class equals badge new, new, okay. Underneath that, we have an image. And again, I have these images pulled from Colorlib. So let's add the image in, recent games one. And then let's create a div for the lower section. Let's just call it box lower section. And that's gonna be all this text down here at the bottom. And then first thing we have is an H4. Let's go ahead and copy the text. Then we have a paragraph. Again, I'm just gonna copy paste from our prototype. And then we have a comments. It's gonna be the exact same thing, hyperlink to nothing, class equals comments, three comments. Okay, so that's one of the boxes. So you can see that we have three of them. So let's go ahead and copy and paste our one box two more times in the indentation. What is going on? Let's fix the indentation. Okay, and the next box is racing. So let's go ahead and change our badge to racing. Change the word to racing. And the next badge is adventure. Change the word to adventure. And then we're also gonna change the images. This will be recent games to Recent games three. And then we had some different text here. So let's update the text to be consistent. This is the same. And that's the same as this one. Okay. So that should do it for this section. Recent games, three boxes. Yes. So next we have this tournaments section with this kind of uh, patterned background. So we'll worry about that in our CSS a little bit later, but let's go ahead and create this section. Um, we'll just give it an ID of tournaments. So ID equals tournaments. And then uh, once again, inside we have these two boxes kind of laid out next to one another. Again, I'm just gonna use Flexbox. So let's create a flex container. Inside, let's create this first orange tournaments badge up on top, so let's give it a class of badge and a class of tournaments. And the text inside is just tournaments. And then let's create the box, boxes. Div class equals box, and then we have a badge. So let's go ahead and create that badge. Class equals badge, premium, tournament. And then premium tournament inside. Next we have, <clears throat> excuse me, let's create a div and call it tournaments image. Inside of this we'll put the image. So images slash tournaments underscore one dot JPEG. Okay. Let's go ahead and just organize our code a little bit here. Okay, so that's the the image. Next, we're gonna have some content for each box. So let's call this, uh, this div a class of tournaments content. And then we're gonna put all this down in there. So the first thing that head text, StarCraft 2, we'll put it in an H3. StarCraft 2, underneath we have a bunch of little informational type label things. So I'm gonna put each one of those in their own div and give each one a label tag. And the label is gonna be, the first one will be terminate begins, colon, then do a space. And then in a strong tag, we're gonna put some dates here, June 20th, 2019. And then 
go ahead and just copy copy this a few more times because we have quite a bit of the exact same looking kind of label and then information. So two, three, four. I'll even do it one more time for the prizes one at the bottom because it's still pretty similar. Okay, next one is terminate yeah, excuse me, tournament ends. Then we have participants. Can't type. Participants and then tournament organizer and then prizes. Oops. And let's give prizes a class. So let's say class equals prizes. It's a little bit of a different color. And then let's change the actual text in here. So July 1st, 2019. Just want to be consistent with our prototype. This one will be 10 teams. And then the organizer is admin. And then for this one, I'm just going to copy, copy the text. Oops, paste it in. Okay, and also notice how this text color and size matches the label over here. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of using a strong tab here, strong tag, I'm going to use a label tag for this text. There we go. So label div, okay. So that's one of the boxes. Since we have two of them, let's go ahead and copy and paste it for the second box, okay. The next one is going to be, let's see, so we still have the premium tournament badge, tournament's image, but we need to update this to tournament two, tournament's two, it's the other image, and then we have, instead of StarCraft two, World of Warcraft, tournament begins, this information is all the same. Yeah, that's all the same, okay. So that should do it for that section. So next we have recent reviews, and we have, it looks like, four boxes, and I think on a larger screen, yeah, they'll go one, two, three, four, and we also have this background image which on larger screens it will appear, and I think on smaller screens it disappears eventually. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this section, recent reviews. So let's go ahead and say section ID, recent reviews. Let me just scroll down here. And then we have an H1 header text. Recent reviews. And then again, I'm going to use a flex, flex box to lay out these boxes. So let's create one of the boxes. Div class equals box. Let's do a span for that little circular rating badge there. So class equals, oops, rating badge. We'll say gold. And this one is 9.3. And then underneath the Rating badge, we have the image, so let's say div, oops, div class equals recent reviews image, and then inside of that we'll have an image tag, and we'll just add one of our images, recent reviews one dot jpeg, okay. <clears throat> Underneath that we have well, let's see. Underneath the image, we have this smaller header text and then like a, what looks like a paragraph of text. So let's just create a div for that lower section. And then the header will be an H4. Assassin's Creed. And then underneath that, we'll have a paragraph. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste into the paragraph tag. Okay, and then that should do it for the box. And we have four of them, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this box 
four more times. Oh. Man, all right, fix the indentation. I'm guessing I'm doing something wrong when I'm pasting these divs, but okay, let's fix the indentation. <clears throat> the next uh, the next badge is 9.5. Let's change that. And it is purple. Let's give it a class of purple. The next one is 9.1. And let's say green. The next is 9.7. And we'll say violet. And then let's also update the images. So this one will be recent reviews 2.jpg, recent reviews 3.jpg, recent reviews 4.jpg. And then the next one is Doom for the header. And if I scroll down here, we have Overwatch and GTA. So Overwatch and GTA. Everything else I think should be the same. Um, yes. Okay. So next section is this kind of post and comments type section, which again has this kind of patterned background. And we'll see how we accomplish that later in the CSS. So let's just create a section with ID of posts, comments, and then inside again. We're going to use a flex container. And then one other thing, if we pull this back out, yeah, so on larger screens, we kind of have this, this cool little image to the left underneath, underneath this Game Warrior logo and then these two boxes over to the right. On smaller screens, that image will eventually disappear, I believe. Whoops. Yeah. It's gone and it kind of just keeps collapsing down to one on top of the other. Okay. <clears throat> So yeah, uh, flex container. And then the first thing we're gonna create is that Game Warrior div with the logo and this text and that, that image that we saw that disappears on smaller screens. So we'll create a div class of game hyphen warrior. Inside we're gonna add the image of that logo. We'll call it footer logo. And then underneath the image, we have a paragraph tag. Let's just go ahead and copy that text. Okay, and then underneath the paragraph was that other image. So let's give it a class of footer graphic and source images. Sword, lady, footer, PNG. Okay, that's that image. Next, let's go ahead and create a div class posts comments box. Okay, and then the first thing here is the latest posts header. So let's go ahead and create an H3 latest posts. Underneath that, let's create the first post item. So div class equals post item and that's going to be this kind of first piece here with the image on the left and the text on the right. So class equals post item and then let's add the image. Images latest posts one jpg <clears throat> and then underneath the image we have a div. Inside of that div we're going to add all of this text. So the first thing is going to be an h5 and that's that date June 21st, 2019. And then we have a paragraph. Let's go ahead and just copy that. Oops. Copy that text. And then we have this by admin. Let's put that in a small tag by colon admin. And that should do it for the first post item and we have three of them so let's just go ahead again and copy and paste it two more times and it's going to do the indenting thing. 
So let's fix the indentation. <clears throat> and let's update the images. This will be latest post two, latest post three. And I think the text is the exact same for all of them. Okay, so that should do it for the latest post. Now let's do the top comments. So under this post comments box div, let's create another div class of <clears throat> posts comments box. Just going to use the same class name. And we'll create an H3 for the header top comments, which is this right here. And then underneath that, we're going to create the first comments item. So div class equals comments item. That's going to be this first one here of four. So the first thing we have, again, is the image top comments onejpg Underneath that, let's create a div. Inside of the div, we'll create a paragraph. And then the, the author's name here is a different color, so we're going to put that in a span. We're going to say class equals author. And the first one is James Smith. And then also the word on is a different color, so let's put that in a span on. And then orm ipsum net consector tour. And that's. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's the paragraph there. So underneath that, we're going to have an H5, and that's going to be the, the date, June 21st, 2019. That's the H5. And that's the first comments item. So let's go ahead again and just copy and paste this. This isn't just going to be brutal because there's four of them. So two, three. Fix the indentation. Bear with me while I fix that. Okay. So we have our comments items, all four of them. Let's update the images. This will be two, top comments three, top comments four. And I think the text is the same on all of them. Yeah. Just a prototype. We're just trying to learn HTML and CSS, the content. <clears throat> doesn't matter too much. So that's the four comment items. And I believe that's it for this section. We got the top part. Yeah, okay. So now we're finally finished with the main content area. Next is the footer. So let's go ahead and create a footer tag. And then again, I'm going to be using a flex box just to lay this out as well, because we have this kind of <clears throat> copyright on the left and then text links on the right. So let's go ahead and do that. Div class is flex. And then let's put the copyright in a small tag. So I'll just let's see, copyright and then ampersand copy semicolon. 2019, all rights reserved, and then do a pipe. This template is made with, and to get the um, little heart sign there, we're going to use what's called an HTML code. So let's put it in a span. Let's give it a class of footer heart, and the HTML code is ampersand pound signed 9829 semicolon and that should give us a heart icon and then by and let's give a shout out to colorlib so https colorlib.com and then let's say whoops let's give it a target blank so it opens in a new tab and then it is color lib. And then we'll do a period outside of the hyperlink. So copyright 2019 all rights reserved. This template made with love by color lib period. 
wonder if I can zoom out a bit. Uh, there we go. That's probably easier to see. I apologize if it's been hard to see the code. Um, I will have a link to all the code, all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, in the description of this video. So don't worry too much about not being able to see it all since I have to scroll to the right for a lot of it. Okay, so that, that was the small tag. Underneath that, we're going to have a unordered list. And that's going to house all these links. So list item. Inside we have a hyperlink that goes nowhere. And the first one is home. And I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this list item a few more times. I think it's five of them. I really need to figure out what's going on with this indentation. Okay, I'm going to fix the indentation really quick. Okay, so we have home, games, blog, forums, contact. Okay. And then Let's see, what else in the footer? I think that's it for the footer. Yeah, that is it. So that's basically the raw HTML. So if I save this, let's go ahead and pull this open um, in Firefox. So this is what it looks like with just the plain HTML, no CSS or JavaScript. Um, pretty bad, right? So CSS is very powerful and we'll see soon how to make this kind of come alive so let's go ahead and go back to the top and then let's go into styles.css which is our linked style sheet and we're going to add some kind of global style rules to start so for the body tag we're going to give it a font family of Helvetica with a sans serif backup we're going to get rid of all body margins so margin zero and then I like to comment my CSS to keep it very organized. So I'm going to say start global style rules. And then let's target all the headers. H4, H5, oops, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5. All of those are going to be line height of 1.5. So that's kind of the vertical spacing between each line. Font weight of 300. So to give it a kind of lighter font weight margin of 0 0.5 m's on the top and the bottom and zero margin on the right and the left next we'll just target the h1s by themselves let's give them a font size of 2.5 m's and then the h2s will be font size of 2 m's h3s are going to be font size of 1.6 m's h4s font size of 1.4 m's H5s will be font size of 1.2 M's. And then let's target the hyperlinks or the anchor tags. Give them a text decoration of none because we don't want this to be underlined by default. We want it to be only underlined when you hover over it. Let's see, I'll just refresh this. Or it'll be highlight to a different color when you hover over it, excuse me. So let's remove the underline by saying text decoration none. Next, we'll target the P tags, all the label tags, and the strong tags. And we're going to say line height of 2, font size of 0.85 m's, and font weight of 300. Again, kind of a lighter font weight. Um, and then, let's see, next we're going to say dot flex which is going to target all those flex containers and we're going to say display flex so that it acts like a flex box let's set a max width of 1200 pixels so that on very large screens it won't expand the entire width we'll just kind of constrain the maximum width give it margin zero on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right which will kind of horizontally center it on the page and then padding of 0 15 which is zero padding on the top and the bottom and 15 pixels on the right and the left 
and then we'll say justify content space between and that kind of just all the child elements of the flex containers will be spaced out evenly from one another horizontally so it kind of handles the if I drag this back out handles this kind of spacing one two three horizontally with consistent spacing in between each item so that's just my content space between um, let's see what else do we need for global so we have all these common badges right so let's create that badge class so we'll give it padding of nine pixels on the top and the bottom and 20 pixels on the right and the left let's give it a color of pound e e e which is kind of a grayish color we'll say display inline block let's transform the text to uppercase just in case it's not that way to begin with font weight of 600 make it a little bit more bold and we'll say text align center and font size 0.75 m's okay so that's the generic badge next we had the new badge and I think this one the background color I already pulled that it is ff 205 F what's that kind of pink color and the next badge was the strategy and that one is background color of 4 EAE 60 next was the racing badge so give that a background color of 694 EAE and just to scroll and see what I'm talking about, I'm doing these badges here. So this is the pink background, green, blue, purple. So I'm giving those all of their background colors here. So next one was, let's see, we had the RPG badge, and I think it was the same as the adventure badge. So let's target both of those. So we have the role-playing badge here was this kind of light blue, and the adventure badge, same light blue color. So we're gonna target both of those and give them the same background color. So RPG and adventure, background color of 40ABF5. There's that light blue. <clears throat> the next was the tournament, tournaments badges. So if I scroll back down to that section, it's these badges here. So badge tournaments, Background color is that kind of yellow color, FB6 E10. <clears throat> or sorry, this was the the orange tournaments badge up here. These ones are the premium tournament badges, excuse me. So badge premium tournament. Background color of FFB 320. There's that yellow. Also for these we want to change the color. The color is this kind of darker grayish black color instead of white. <clears throat> so that is 252525. Should give it that. And that takes care of the badges and then let's go ahead and add the CSS for this kind of shade effect. If I Pull this back out just to kind of show you how it works. Let's right click and inspect one of these boxes. And you see how we have this class equals shade. If I were to say get rid of that, I think I can just delete the node. You see how it kind of brightens up the image and kind of makes this text a little bit harder to read. That's the purpose of that shade div. So let's refresh and bring it back. So let's go ahead and create the CSS to kind of have that effect. So let's pull this back over. And let's target the shade class and we'll say position absolute, which will kind of make it hover over on top of or underneath other elements. We'll give it a Z index of one, width of 100%, height of 100%, which is just kind of saying take up 100% of the width and the height of your parent container so that it's the entire box, the entire div. 
So height and width 100%, zero pixels away from the top of that box and zero pixels away from the left of that box. So make sure that it's starting at the top left corner and then going 100% width and height from there, which basically says take up the entire box. Background, let's say RGBA, we're gonna say 0, 0, 0, 0 0.7, and that's just basically a black background with 0.7 opacity. And that's kind of like a measure of how see-through something is. So if I put this at one, then it would be completely black and you could not see through it. If I put it at zero, it would be completely translucent and you wouldn't even know it's there. It's like an invisible. Somewhere in the middle between zero and one kind of gives it this half and half see-through look. And that's what we want. And with that, I think we're good with the global style rules. So let's add a comment and say end global style rules. And then let's go ahead and start our header styles. And let's go ahead and add the comment to end our header styles as well. And we'll add our styles in between those two comments. Okay, so the first thing is if we go back to our HTML, we have this header tag and inside we have a flex div container. And then we have, oops, we have the logo, these text links and the login register button. So let's go ahead and target that header tag and give it our background color, which is that kind of black color, 131313. Give it a padding 20 pixels on the top and the bottom and zero on the left and the right. And then we'll set the position to relative. And this will have to do with the kind of hamburger menu on smaller screens and the float out nav menu bar when you click the hamburger menu that'll all be positioned absolute. So this needs to be positioned relative. Uh, give it a border bottom of one pixel solid and then FFB320 will be that yellow color and that's that yellow bottom border that you can see there. And then that should do it for the header. Next we're gonna target that hamburger menu button, which again, if I pull this over it's this hamburger menu here. So let's go ahead and, so background color will be transparent. We'll give it a border of one pixel, solid, and then FFB 20, same yellow color. Padding three pixels, five pixels, width, 30 pixels, cursor pointer, and then by default, we're gonna say display none. It's gonna be invisible on larger screens. Uh, next, we'll do the hamburger menu strips, which are the span, the span tags inside of the hamburger menu. So if we go back to our HTML, we have our hamburger menu was, is the button, and then inside we have these three span tags, each with a class of strip. So let's go ahead and style those to match the hamburger menu look. Display block, height of one pixels, background color is FFB320, that same yellow, and then margin of four pixels on the top and the bottom and zero on the left and the right. That should be good for the hamburger menu. And then what else? Next we have the nav and then the unordered list within the nav. So that's this nav unordered list. So you can say list style type none and that will get, so if I click back over to our work in progress here, we can see that we have these bullets to the left of the unordered list. List style type none is gonna get rid of those. Let's also get rid of the padding that is given to it by default and then we'll say margin 10 pixels on the top and then zero on the right, zero on the left, and zero on the bottom. And then let's target each of the 
list items, the LIs. So we'll say display inline block and then font size of 1M, margin of zero on the top, and bottom and 18 pixel margin on the right and the left. And that should be good for the nav LIs. And then let's target the hyperlinks inside of the LIs, give them a color of EEE, -E -E, which is a light gray, font weight 600. Save that, and if we go back we were kind of working to style, let's see, style these here. So they're kind of that off-white color. Okay, let's bring this back over. All right, what's next here? So that was the hyperlinks. So next, let's do them on their hover state. So again, if I pull this back over, when you hover, over them, they turn this yellow color. So nav ULLIA colon hover. Then we can change the color, excuse me, FFB 320. So on hover, we're going to change the color of them to that yellow color. And then let's see what else. We have the login register button. So let's target that. <clears throat> they have an ID of login register button. So background color is FFB320, color is 131313. Let's give it a border radius of 20 pixels because it has these kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, round corners. So border radius of 20 pixels. And then we'll give it some padding, 10 pixels on top and the bottom and 15 pixels on the right and the left. And then font size of point. 85 M's and then finally font weight of 600 to give it a little bit of a more bold look. And I think that does it for the header. So let's go ahead and save this, refresh. Um, something is going on here. Let's inspect. Ah, I see what's going on. The shade div is kind of taken over the whole screen so we'll fix that in a second let's go back to the prototype let's kind of move on so that's it for the header styles uh, that will fix itself shortly we just got to continue down here so let's start the hero styles that's going to be this whole hero section with the purple monkey and the best games out there and then let's say end hero styles and then inside of here we're going to go ahead and target the hero image section and we're going to say background URL this is how we're going to add an image in our CSS images slash purple monkey bg dot jpg and then we're going to say position it on the top in the center and do not repeat it so just show it one time top center no repeat and then we'll say height 820 pixels give it a fixed height and then that was the so if we go back to the HTML so what we we were targeting this section tag ID of hero image so we added the background images to the or this background image to this section tag so next we have oops, hero marketing text which was a class name, so we're using a dot. Let's say max width 1200 pixels. Uh, give it some constraints on very large screens. Margin negative 30 pixels, auto and zero. That's saying negative 30 pixel top margin, auto on the right and the left, zero on the bottom. We'll give it a position of absolute. And then we'll say space it out 40% from the top of its parent container and then left zero, right zero, padding zero on the top and bottom and 20 pixels on the right and the left. And that will give it this kind of vertically centered look. And then let's target the hero marketing tag. Well, let's target the H1 tag inside of that. So that's just the best games out there text. We'll say color 
that off-white color, E, 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 and then font size 3.5 M's, font weight 300, and then margin 0 0.5 M's and 0. And then next, let's target Hero Marketing Text Span. And the span is this word games. Uh, that one would be the yellow color, so color FFB 320. Uh, next we have the H5, which I believe is this text. If we go back to our HTML, yeah, we put it in an H5. So all this text here is an H5, and then we have a read more button. So hero marketing text H5, we'll give it that same off-white color, E, E, E. Font size 0.85 M's, font weight 300, max width 500 pixels, whoops, line height of 2, margin bottom of 2.5 M's. That should do it. And then hero marketing text button. So now we'll target that read more button here. And this thing has background color. That same yellow, FFB 320, and then the color is 131313, a black color. It's got rounded corners, so let's give it a border radius, say 25 pixels, padding 15 on the top and bottom, 25 on the left and the right, font size 0.85 M's, font weight 600, get rid of the border and then cursor pointer that's it for the button and I think that should do it for the hero styles section yes that should be good let's move on although first off I'm actually going to comment out this CSS for the shade div for now let's comment that out save it and then let's go back over to our work in progress here do a refresh there we go so now it's starting to come together so we have our header uh, we have our hero section Let me just pull this out a bit so yeah it's starting to come together looking pretty good looking pretty organized uh, we still have to fix the other sections obviously but it is coming together so go back to our prototype the next thing is this news section so let's go ahead and say start latest news styles and latest news styles okay all right so the first thing is going to be let's just look at our html really quick so we have section id of latest news we have a flex container and then h5 and then latest news container all right, so let's see here. Latest news, let's say margin bottom 75 pixels, and that's to, to give the spacing underneath it. And then latest news flex, let's target the flex container within it. And we're gonna say justify content flex start rather than space between. This is to kind of line things up differently there. Say max width 100% and padding of zero. All right, latest news, flex H5. So let's target this H5, which I believe was, yeah, the first element within the flex was this latest news H5, which is this yellow box here to the left. So that one, we're gonna say flex basis 25%. That's gonna give it 25% of the overall available width. And then let's set the background color to, what is it, FFP320, the yellow, padding 25 pixels, margin zero. We'll align the text to the right of its container. As you can see, it's aligned right the line right we'll give it that off-white color e, e, e 
font size of 1.2 M's. So that's the H5, that, that's that first yellow box there. So if I refresh this, oops, I didn't save my CSS. Save the CSS, refresh, there's our, our yellow box. Now we gotta do this right hand side, which is the black background with the new badge. So, uh, let's go back to our HTML. <clears throat> so we had latest news container. So let's target latest news container. Give it a background color of 131313. Position relative. And this one will have a flex basis of 75%, which is going to take up the rest of the available width. So this latest news box got 25% and this 75%. And then padding 25 pixels. And then latest news container. Let's target the badge. Let's say margin right 20 pixels. And that's going to add some spacing to the right of this badge here, 20 pixels. And then latest news container. Latest news. Is that what we called it? Latest news text? Um, latest news text. There it is. Yep. So we'll target that. That's this text here. And we'll just give it that off-white color. Let's see if that works. There it is. Although it looks a little bit off. Hmm. The font size is a little bit off. Uh, we'll worry about that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and just move on and we will come back to that. So next is the, whoops, go back to the finished product here. Next will be these game types styles. So let's go ahead and add some more Add another comment here, start game types styles and game types styles. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna start picking up the pace a bit here. I don't want this video to be too long. So first thing, we're gonna target the game types boxes. Margin bottom of 75 pixels. And that's to give this spacing underneath this whole section and then game types boxes target the each individual box and we'll say flex basis 25% position relative and give them each a height of 380 pixels and then oops game types boxes dot box dot new so that's going to be targeting this first box here with the badge of new uh, let's see so we'll say background URL so we have images slash wow, lady top center no repeat background size cover and so if we go back to our HTML, let's see, we're down here to the game type boxes. So if you remember, we didn't add any images here. So we're gonna add these images as background images. So I'm adding them to dot box dot new. So the, that's this div here where that has the class of box and the class of new. So we're gonna add our background images to the box divs, so box strategy, box RPG, box racing. And then that way we can have that dark shade kind of float on top of it. Uh, so there's the first one. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste this because the other three are going to be very similar. So we have one for strategy, one for RPG, and one for racing. So strategy, whoops. Strategy, RPG, racing, and this is going to be, what's this one called? 
robotic ninja. Next one is Jeep armed. And the fourth one for the racing is sports car. And they all have a background size of cover. Um, let's see what else. Now, how about the actual badges themselves? So they're a little different. But they're a little bit larger. So if we compare this new badge to this one here, we can see this one's a little bit larger than this. So let's go ahead and correct for that. Game types boxes. Is that the correct? No, it's game type boxes game types boxes okay I'm gonna go ahead and just so that these match game types boxes I'm gonna change the ID here to game types boxes that way our CSS will work correctly so game types boxes um, game types boxes dot box dot badge so we're gonna target each of the badges we're going to say position relative, give it a Z index of two so that it sits on top of that shade div, top 20 pixels, left 20 pixels. And that just says sit the badge 20 pixels away from the top and 20 pixels away from the left edge. So it kind of spaces it out as you see there. Uh, next game types boxes.box.contents. So next we're going to target this contents div here to kind of organize this text. So let's go back here and let's give it a font size of 0.8 m's. Um, actually no, scratch that. That's going to be for the links themselves. So the contents are going to be positioned absolute Z index of two bottom 20 pixels so 20 pixels from the bottom of the the box div um, zero from the left and then we'll give it the color of EEE -E -E, the off-white and then padding zero on the top 35 pixels on the right zero on the bottom and 25 pixels on the left and that's for the contents box and then game types boxes dot box dot contents and then a which is the hyperlink for these this word or this uh, three comments down at the bottom that's a hyperlink we're going to target that here and that's we're going to say font size 0.8 m's a little bit smaller font weight 300 and then color 999 which is a gray kind of gray color like you see here okay so I think that's it for the game types styles let's go ahead and also let's let's uncomment again this um, shade here so we can get that style back because that should have fixed the issue after we created the CSS for these game types boxes that should allow our shade to work so this is what it looks like currently let's pull this back over refresh and there we go so we have our four boxes there uh, it's not responsive yet as you can see so we will still need to to fix that with some media queries but we have our boxes laid out so next let's do start recent games styles and recent games styles and then scroll down that's this section here recent games so let's target the section tag recent games was the id we'll give it a background url for the image of oops dot dot slash images slash recent games vg dot png top center no repeat and that is the image of on a large screen we get oops it needs to be a pretty large screen we get these two kind of characters 
uh, one on either side. That's the background image for recent games. On smaller screens, they will eventually kind of just disappear. But <clears throat> that is the background for that. And then we'll set the background color, which is kind of this light, light gray, EEF 2F6. And then we'll give it a border top. You can see that there is a slight top border there. So one pixel solid uh, D6D EE7. And then also a border bottom. One pixel solid D6D EE7. Same thing. Um, padding 70 pixels on the top, zero on the right. 120 pixels on the bottom and zero on the left. And that's gonna give this kind of spacing on the top and bottom. Uh, what else? So that's the recent games. Um, next we have the H1. So that's this H1 tag header text there. We'll just say text align center because it is aligned in the center. And then recent games box is position relative, flex basis of 31%, and then background color of FFF, which is just white. So that's each of these boxes here. Um, each of them having a flex basis of 31%, oops, I'm missing a colon here too, uh, is gonna, allow for some some spacing in between them as well rather than doing like 33 percent okay so next recent games box badge position absolute top 20 pixels left 20 pixels c index of two that's the badge for each of the boxes And then next we have recent games box image. So each of them has an image. Let's give it a width of 100%. So it takes up 100% of the width of its parent container, which is the box. And then recent games box lower section, which is all this kind of text down here. Uh, or to say padding 20 pixels. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this a few times because I got a few things to target. The next thing we're gonna target the paragraph tags in the lower section. And that will be, oops, color 999. And then the next one we'll target is the hyperlinks. And that'll be, again, color 999 and font size 0.8Ms. So that's these three comments section down at the bottom there. Uh, and that should do it for the recent games section. So save the CSS, go back to our kind of work in, in progress here. And we can see how the recent games section looks right now. You can only see two of the boxes, new and racing. We're supposed to have three boxes. Adventure, where is adventure? It's over here to the right. It's, there's not enough room. So let's refresh. And there we go. It's looking much better. Still not responsive, but we have our three boxes lined up. And then I think if we pull this over and there's the background image with these two uh, characters here, one on the left and one on the right. So that's the recent games section. Let's go ahead and move on to um, tournaments styles. So start and end tournaments styles and then let's see let's scroll down here oh, let's scroll down to our prototype all right so here's the tournaments section so the first thing we have was that section tag with an id of tournaments and we're going to give it a background url of dot dot slash images slash footer bg pattern and this time we're going to say 
position zero zero and we're going to repeat it so we want it to repeat and fill up the entire section with these this kind of patterned background um, and if in case you're wondering why I'm, I'm adding this dot dot slash whereas I was not doing that in my index.html file so whenever I was adding an image from the HTML file it was just images slash image name right but in the CSS I have to do dot dot slash images slash image name the reason for the dot dot is because if we look at our directory structure the CSS file is in a folder called CSS when we add a dot dot it, it kind of means look up one folder so it's gonna say look up to the parent folder of CSS which is let's code this and then look for a folder named images that's here and then look for an image called footer bg pattern png and here it is here so footer bg pattern is just one tiny square of this pattern and we are going to add it in um, and re repeat it so that it kind of just loads it through this entire section container if that makes any sense so also we want to give it some padding here so 125 pixels on the top zero on the right and the left and then 105 pixels on the bottom and that's going to give it this kind of spacing on the top and the bottom um, what else we have then we have the flex container in our tournaments section we're going to say position relative and then tournaments badge it's going to be positioned absolute top zero left zero z index of two and then tournaments dot badge dot tournaments so top will be negative 32 pixels and left will be 15 pixels and that is this upper tournaments badge here so the negative 32 pixel top is basically pulling it up higher outside of the actual box <clears throat> excuse me all right so next is going to be the box themselves so tournaments dot box and then let's see background color of two five two five two five which is a darker color that we see here background of the box and then they each have quite a bit of padding so 70 pixels on the top 20 pixels on the right and the left and 40 pixels on the bottom and then we'll give them a flex basis of 45 percent oops and position them oops relative all right so next is oops tournaments box dot tournaments oops tournaments dash image so we're going to float this left and give it a width of 30 <clears throat> percent uh, and that is because i should probably show this on a larger screen when we pull this out to a larger screen these boxes sit a little bit with a little bit of a different layout so the image is over on the left the text is over on the right um, and they're kind of not as tall but on a smaller screen eventually they will collapse down and then the image will be on top and the text will be on the bottom so what we're doing right now is we're kind of doing a desktop first approach um, generally these days we, we we usually do mobile first uh, but we'll take care of the mobile responsive part in the media queries a little bit later so yeah width of 30 percent and float it left and then let's see and then we'll target the tournaments box tournaments image and then the image tag itself because if we go back to our HTML the tournaments image div is right here and then inside of that div we have the actual image tag itself so we're, we're targeting the actual image tag here 
and we're just going to say width oops 100 percent. so take 100 percent of the width of your parent div next is tournaments box dot tournaments content so oops we cannot type so float left margin left of 25 pixels and width of 60 percent and that is again on larger screens we want some spacing so th the margin left of 25 pixels is going to give this kind of spacing in between each item and then we'll give it a width of 60 percent whereas the image had the width of 30 percent and that's kind of the idea there so let's pull this back over and then what else so hashtag tournaments and then we'll target the box tournaments content and we'll target the h3 inside of the tournaments content which is this header text here and then i'm going to just go ahead and copy this because i'm going to have to target quite a few different things in here so i'm going to copy this four different times so the first thing we're going to do is the h3 and that's going to be that yellow color so what is that that was ffb 320 and then we'll say margin top of zero and then the next thing we'll target is the label label tags which are all these this is one label tournament begins tournament ends these are all labels so for all of the labels we want the color to be this 999 kind of light gray color and then the font size of 0.75 m's and then the next thing we'll target is the label with a class of prizes which is this label down here and this one will just be that yellow color displayed inline block and margin top of 12 pixels and that's to give it some spacing above it between the rest of these labels and then the next one we'll target is the strong tags and those are all of this text here all these dates and then 10 teams and then admin those are all in strong tags so those will be color of EEE which is that kind of off-white color and then font size of 0.75 M's and I think that does it for the tournaments section on desktop yeah all right so next to the recent reviews well first off let's go ahead and save let's look at our work in progress there we go let's refresh we got the background image repeated that the box is laid out uh, looking pretty decent it's not responsive yet obviously but we'll take care of that soon okay so the recent reviews section we have these four boxes and this background image of the God of War guy, I believe. So let's pull this back over and let's get started on the recent reviews section. So recent reviews styles and then end recent reviews styles. And then, okay, so first thing is we want to add that background image. So let's target the recent reviews section and then say background URL dot dot slash images slash recent reviews BG. And then we'll say top right, no repeat because we want it to be on the right side of the top. That's where it was appearing. And then background size cover padding 75 pixels 0 and 50 pixels that's gonna give it 75 pixels padding on the top and 50 pixels padding on the bottom okay next let's target that h1 tag we'll say text align of center and margin bottom of 1.65 m's and then let's target the boxes each of these are going to have a flex basis of 23%. They'll be positioned relative and we'll set all the text inside of them to center. 
Oops. And then target recent reviews. I have too many S's up here. Recent reviews box rating badge. So now let's target all these circular colored rating badges. So we'll give them a border radius of 28 pixels to make them rounded. Padding of 13 pixels. Font size of 1.1 M is a little bit larger. And then color of off-white, so EEE, font weight 600. Background color of FFB320, yellow, since the first one there is that yellow background color. Position absolute, top negative 30 pixels and left 30 pixels. And in case you're wondering why I'm, sometimes I'm setting the boxes to position relative, other times in previous sections I'm not setting them to relative. The reason I have these boxes set to relative is because I'm positioning these rating badges absolutely. And these rating badges are inside the boxes. So if the box was not positioned, then the rating badge, since it's positioned absolute, would then be positioned relative to the next positioned ancestor. So. CSS positioning is a little confusing at first. I would recommend uh, re reading more into it, but that's the reason for the relative and the absolute positioning, is so that I can kind of position this rating badge from the top and the left, and it will respect its parent container, which is the box. So very important to learn about CSS positioning. It's very handy, highly recommend looking into it deeper. Um, all right, moving on. So next thing, recent reviews box. Let me just copy. So let's see, rating badge dot purple. And then let's copy this a few more times for the other colors. We have green and violet. I'll just copy it, or I'll just paste it one more time. And this one will be Okay, so purple is going to be background color, 694, EAE. Next one is green. And this one will be background color for EAE, 60. Next one is violet, and that will be background color. FF 20 AE. All right, that's all the badges. And then next one was going to be dot box dot recent reviews image. Oops. So let's go back to our HTML. The recent reviews image is going to be this div here. So we, we we have a div with class of recent reviews image and then inside of that we have the actual image tag similar to the previous section. So that's what we're targeting here. We'll say, whoops, we'll say margin bottom of 0.75 m's and then overflow of hidden. So anything that overflows outside of that recent reviews image div, we'll just hide that. And then let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing, paste it down here. And now let's target the actual image tag inside of that div. And again, we'll just say width 100%. So make sure that image takes up 100% of the width of its parent div, which is the recent reviews image div. Next, we'll say recent reviews box and then target the paragraph and that one will just be a color of 999 which is that kind of light gray uh, and I think that does it for recent reviews let's go ahead and save and make sure so this is what it looks like right now if I refresh there we go so we got our background image in there we got the header the four boxes laid out circular badge it's not responsive yet but we'll take care of that later 
Okay, cool. So next section, let's say start posts, comments, styles, end post comment styles, keep our CSS nice and organized with comments. Uh, so the next section is going to be this here, which also has that kind of patterned background. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So posts, comments. So that, that was our section tag with an ID of post comments. So we'll say background URL dot dot slash images slash footer BG pattern. And then again, zero, zero. And we do want this to repeat. So zero, zero, repeat. And what's going on here? There we go. Padding 75 pixels on the top and bottom and zero on the right and the left to give some spacing on the top and the bottom there. Um, next, I'll go ahead and just copy this since I'm gonna be using it a lot. So paste that there. Um, target the Game Warrior div, which is this first div up here that has the logo and the text. So we'll say flex basis. 32% and position relative. Next, we'll target the post comments box, which are these two boxes here. They both have a class of post comments box. We'll give those a flex basis of 28%. Next, we'll target the P tag inside of the game warrior div. And then we're going to say color of that off white and <clears throat> font weight of 600. Next, we'll do the image inside of the game warrior tag. And we're going to say margin bottom 0.5 M's. And then photographic. So now we're going to target the other image that we have. So if I pull this back out to a larger screen, we have this other image down here, which we gave a class of photographic to. So let's target that image, um, which does not show up on smaller screens. And we'll say position, oops, absolute margin bottom of zero and width of 115%. So we're gonna make it expand a little bit larger than its parent container. And the reason for that is if I pull this out again, you can see how, how it kind of overlaps this div over here just a little bit. So we want it to be a little bit larger. It also kind of expands down below. So it's kind of a cool little effect there. So width of 115%. Uh, next, we're going to target uh, the posts, comments box. Okay, let's actually just go ahead and, I don't know why I did that out of order. So posts, comments box, put that, let's try to keep it all completely organized. So we'll have the game warrior styles and then we'll start the post comments box styles. So uh, flex base is 28% for, let's scroll down to the area for these boxes here. And then background color of 252525, padding 20 pixels, 20 pixels, 25 pixels. So 20 pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the right and the left, and 25 pixels padding on the bottom. And then border one pixel solid, and then we'll give it 4A, 4A, 4A. And that'll give it this kind of outline border, lighter kind of light black, dark gray color. <clears throat> All right, so next will be the post comments box H3. And that is these header texts in here. So give it the color of EEE, which is that off-white. And then let's target the post item. 
say margin top 25 pixels and then we'll say post item first child margin top of zero so what's going on here what we're saying is all of these post items right we have three post items give them all a margin top of 25 pixels so the spacing in between them but we don't want the first post item to have that margin top otherwise it would push this down a little too far so we're saying the first child give it a margin top of zero every other child give it a margin top of 25 so they all have a margin top of 25 except the first child which is this one here okay um, then post item now let's target another pseudo class which is after so we have before and after we'll target the after pseudo class if you're, you're not sure exactly what that is just um, google the css after pseudo selector you can read about it so we'll give it a content so that it renders display table and clear both this is just a way to to clear floats and we'll see why we need to do that in just a second Next, we'll target the image inside of post item. We're going to float it left and give it a width of 30%. And then we'll target the first div within post item. So only the first. So if we go back to our CSS, let's just look at what we've got going on here. So we have post item divs here, right? Every post item has an image and then another div inside of it. So we're targeting this first div here with this CSS post item and then immediate child div. That's kind of what that means. So we're going to also float this left and give it a margin left of 5% and a width of 65%. And that's the reason why we're clearing the floats up here is because we have this post item has two children that are floated. The image is floated and then the, the div container is floated. So this is a cool way to kind of clear the floats by using this pseudo selector. Okay, so next post item div and H5. So we'll give it that yellow color. So the H5 is these dates here. So FFB. 320, font size of 0.8 m's, margin top of zero. Next, we will say post item div p to target the paragraphs. And then I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy and paste this one more time because I'm going to have to also target that third tag. OK, so for the p's, give it that off-white color e e e five pixels margin on the top and the bottom zero on the left and the right font size of 0.8 m's next one is the small tag because we remember we put this text down here by colon admin in a small tag so color is 999 kind of a light gray and then font size 0.75 m's a little bit smaller Okay, next we have the comments box over here. So these, these comments items are a little bit different from the post items. So let's go ahead and work on those. So comments item. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I'm going to be using it quite a bit. All right, so let's say margin top 1M and then the first child. Oops, first child, we want margin top to be zero. Same idea as what we did over here, what we're doing over here as well. And again, we're going to use this pseudo selector to clear the floats we're using. Okay, target the image. The image is going to be with 23%. Oops, height is auto border radius, whoops, border radius 50% and float left. 
and that's going to be for these images here. The border radius here is going to be what kind of gives it that rounded look. Because if we look at our images, right, they're not rounded by default. We have just regular square images. Using border radius can, can help make this kind of avatar profile picture type look. All right, so next we'll target the div inside of the comments item. Oops. Comments item div, floated left, margin left, 7%, and width of 70%. And that's gonna be the div that holds all this text to the right of the image. So the next thing we'll have to do, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. Next thing we'll target is the P tag inside of those. So color, off-white, font size, 0.8 M's, margin 0, 0, 005 pixels. So zero on the top and zero on the right and the left and five pixel margin on the bottom. Uh, next would be the span inside of the P tags, right? Because we have this James Smith and then this word on. They were both wrapped in span tags, so we can change the color. So let's give the spans a color of 999. And then give the span with the class of author a different color, right? E92159. To give it that kind of, I don't know if that's like a pink color. Uh, all right, moving on to the H5. Color is FFB320. So now we're, we're working on these dates down here. Font size of 0.8 M's, margin top of zero. Save that. I think that does it for this section. That was a pretty big section. So if we refresh, there it is. So we have um, we have our three items. It's not responsive yet, but we'll fix that. Um, but the posts and the comments items are looking good. Images are rounded. This is kind of overlapping. Great. So next section is the footer. So start footer styles oops and footer styles so let's target the footer tag it's got a background color of 252525 we go back to our finished product it's got that dark background color that's that give it some padding 25 0 and 20 so 25 on the top 20 on the bottom and 0 on the left and the right and then let's target this small tag which had the copyright text Color of DDD, font size of 0.9 M's. And then let's target that footer heart tag inside of the copyright text. So that's this little heart here. We wrap that in a span of footer heart, I believe. We'll say font size 16 pixels. And then we had a hyperlink or an anchor tag here with the word color live. So let's go ahead and set the color of that to 007 BDC to have that kind of blue blue color. Then let's target the unordered list, which is holding these links. So UL, again, list, style, type, none. I probably could have pulled this out to a global style rule since all of the unordered lists so far have been a list style type of none. So that's a good little optimization we can do. I'll admit that my code is not perfect. Uh, let's get rid of the margins on the unordered list that are given to them by default from the browser. Then let's target the list items inside of them. Display inline block, margin 0, 12 pixels. Then let's target the hyperlinks inside, color of DDD, and font size of point eight M's. And I think that should do it for the footer. Let's go back to our work in progress here. Refresh, there it is. 
So we have the copyright text on the left and the links on the right. Uh, again, it's not responsive yet. It should lay out like this on smaller screens. But if we compare large screens, we're looking pretty good. So this is our work in progress. This is our prototype. So pretty good, looking pretty identical. So let's move on to the media queries and get this project wrapped up. So let's bring this back down a bit here. And let's go ahead and start media queries. Whoops. And end media queries. So this is all going to be for the responsive design aspect. So media queries, if you're not familiar, are ways to write CSS rules at certain screen widths or certain um, thresholds for screens. You can do it for like print um, devices or you can just hard code widths. I'm just going to hard code widths to make it simple. So at media max width of 1200 pixels. So this is saying all the CSS I put inside of these two tags here will only be applied to screens of 1200 pixels in width or less. So let's go ahead and constrain the max width of our flex boxes down to 1000. We had it at 1200 pixels before. And then latest news, latest news item. We're going to bring the font size to 0.8 M's. And then in the tournaments section, the tournaments box content, we're going to say margin left of 15 pixels. So it's going to be a little bit of kind of um, random styles here and there, which we're kind of touching things up. So for example, for this, oops, it's a little bit larger. Um, no, sorry, wrong section looking at this section down here. So for the, the tournament's content, we're going to set a margin left of 15 pixels to this content section down here to kind of space it out even with the image above it. And so that's what's going on here. There's going to be quite a bit of random CSS fixes at certain widths. So next would be tournaments uh, box tournaments content h3 now we're going to bring that font size to 1.4 m's and then the margin bottom of 0.2 m's and then let's see i think that's it for 1200 pixels so let's set our next media query to be a max with a 991 pixels which is a common breakpoint you'll see in um, libraries like the bootstrap grid system uh, this is a common breakpoint for stuff like that so at 991 pixels so at screens that are 991 or less we're going to apply these styles so we're going to further constrain the width of our flex containers 720 pixels let's target the list items up in our nav we'll say margin 0 12 pixels so we're going to kind of bring them a little closer together to save horizontal space and then bring the font size to 0.85 m's and then latest news flex h5 we're going to say width 15 percent game types oops boxes flex is going to be flex wrap set to wrap and this is just so that on smaller screens these four boxes are going to wrap to the next line rather than all four be on one line that's kind of what we're doing here flex wrap of wrap and then game types boxes dot box we're going to increase the flex basis to 50% so on screens that are 991 pixels or less, each box is going to take 50% of its available width. So we have two boxes per row, right? And then 
similar thing for the tournaments box except the flex basis is going to be 42 percent so why 42 percent scroll down we have a little bit of space in between them that they're not touching one another um, and so we'll give them a little bit less than 50 percent width uh, next tournaments box tournaments image we're going to say float none because we want the tournament image to be on top on smaller screens. So let's remove that float, set the width to 100%, margin bottom of 10 pixels, height of 250 pixels, and then overflow hidden. So if any of the, the image overflows this div, we're going to hide it. Um, and then let's see, next will be tournaments, box, tournaments, content, margin, left of zero, and width 100%. So I think I, I may have misspoke earlier. When we added the margin left of 15 to the tournaments content at the 1200 pixels, that was this margin, this spacing right here, margin left to 15. On smaller screens, we, we get rid of that margin left and we set the image on top of the contents. So you can see here, we're getting rid of the margin left, and setting the width to 100%. So that was the reason for that. <clears throat> okay, so moving on here. So next, let's work on the recent reviews section. So on smaller screens, we want to remove that background image. So we'll say recent reviews, background of none, right? Because on larger screens, remember we had this background image here of this guy, this gaming character on smaller screens. Let's see. Oops, what am I doing? Recent reviews. On smaller screen sizes, it's completely gone. There is no background image. So at 991 pixels or less, we'll say recent reviews, background of none. And then recent reviews, let's target the flex container. Again, we're gonna say flex wrap of wrap. And that way our four boxes will wrap onto two different rows. And then recent reviews box each box will be a flex basis of 48 percent margin bottom 45 pixels <clears throat> and then post comments section let's target the flex container flex wrap of wrap post comments game warrior so on smaller screens this is going to be a hundred percent width so flex basis of hundred percent margin bottom of 40 pixels and that's to kind of give the spacing underneath it so this will be hundred percent and then um, 40 pixels on bottom post comments post comments box these are each going to be a flex basis of 43%. So they're, they're, they have a space in between them. They're, they're not quite taking up 50% of the available width. Oops. Flex basis 43. Next, post comments. Game Warrior footer graphic. And that was this. If I pull this back out this photographic here. So on smaller screens, it is gone. So let's go ahead and set it to display none. Just get rid of it completely. And then let's work on the footer. So target the flex container within the footer. Flex wrap is gonna be wrap reverse. Notice how on smaller screens, we get these links on top of the copyright text. But on larger screen, we get the copyright text first, 
links second. So by saying wrap reverse, it basically puts the second item on top of the first item. And we see that if we pull the screen down a bit. Second item, nav links on top of copyright text. So flex wrap, wrap reverse. And then let's target the small tag. We'll say flex base is 100%. So take up all the width, font size, 0.75 m's, text align center, margin top 20 pixels, line height 1.5, footer UL, flex base is 100%, text align center, and padding zero. I'm just going to add a comment here to say end 991 pixels just so we don't get lost because this is what is ending that whole media query yep 991 pixel media query is all that so next media query we're going to add is another common breakpoint 767 pixels and let's go ahead and target the H4s, all the H4s on the page. We're going to bring those down to a font size of 1.2 M's. All the flex containers are going to be a max width of 540 pixels. Let's target the nav on the top. So now we're going to work on this nav menu here. We're going to do some trickery to make it hide behind a hamburger menu. So display none. Position it absolute so it kind of floats around let's we'll give it a top of 101 percent width of 100 percent background color 131313 left zero padding zero margin zero and z index of one and then let's target the list items inside of the unordered list so we'll say display block because we're going to want them to sit one on top of the other. So if I just pull this down, see how they're sitting on top of one another instead of side by side. Display block, padding 15 pixels, zero, 15 pixels, 20 pixels, border bottom, one pixel solid, FFB 320, and margin zero. And then nav ULIA, let's target the hyperlinks and size. We're gonna Inside, we're going to increase the font size to 1M for each of those hyperlinks. And then let's target that oops, hamburger menu. So the hamburger menu is going to be display block, so we want it to be visible by default on screens of 767 pixels or less. Give it a margin top of 2 pixels. Then let's target this hero image section. So let's hide that again. So now we're targeting this hero image section with the purple monkey background there. We're going to say, whoops, height 650 pixels. Bring the height down a bit. Background size cover. Then hero marketing text. Margin top of negative 85 pixels. And then let's work on the, oops, the H1. So hero marketing text H1. Let's give it a font size of 2.5 M's. And then let's target the latest news section. Oops. And the flex to target the H5 inside. That's that yellow section, which we can't see. This yellow section here it goes away on smaller screens. So we'll just say display none on this. 767 is a smaller screen. Um, and then latest news container is going to be flex basis 100%. So is that the, is that what we named the latest news? Yeah, latest news container. Flex space is 100%. So we're basically saying make this um, div with the black background here, make it take up 100% of the width since the yellow 
box oops here is now gone all right flex base is 100 <clears> percent <throat> oops uh recent games section we want to put the padding 60 pixels on top and the bottom zero on the right and the left then game types whoops game types boxes box and recent games box so both of the boxes of those two sections we're going to say flex basis 100 percent margin bottom 20 pixels sorry margin bottom give it 30 pixels um, recent games flex and tournaments section flex we're going to say flex wrap of wrap so that the, the boxes are going to wrap on those sections Next, we'll target the box inside of the tournaments section. And this will be flex basis 100%. So take up all of the available width for each of the boxes and give them a margin bottom of 20 pixels. And next, tournaments box dot tournaments image. Bring the height to 400 pixels. Then recent reviews box. We're going to say flex basis 100%. And I apologize if I'm going blazingly fast right now, but I'm just trying to keep this video relatively short. I know this is a huge project, but I don't want this to be too long. So all the code will be available in the description of the video. I'll add a link to it. Okay, so where were we? Recent reviews box flex basis of 100%. Okay, so that, that's just going to give that the boxes in the recent reviews section 100% width on these uh, smaller screens. Okay, next recent reviews box and then recent reviews image height 400 pixels. Post comment section the post comments box we're going to say flex base is 100 percent margin bottom 40 pixels footer target the allies inside of the unordered list bring the margins to 10 pixels on the right and the left target the hyperlinks 0.75 m's and let's just say that's going to end 767 pixel media query and that was a big one okay it's just on the home stretch here so the next media query is 400 pixels this is going to be even smaller screens so the logo image we're going to bring the width to 150 pixels and give it a margin top of two pixels and then the login register button give it padding at 10 pixels and font size 0.65 m so we're going to bring that down a bit in smaller screens and then tournaments box tournaments image we'll say height 220 pixels um, and i think that should do it so if we go back to our work in progress here uh, before adding all these media queries, we can see just looking at this section alone, the boxes don't collapse very well. We still have our latest news. So if we go ahead and refresh this, collapse it down, and there we go. Now we have two boxes on each row, and if we go even smaller, it turns into one box. Just what we want. Same thing here. All right, so if I bring this back out, we got our tournaments boxes, even larger. Tournaments box has the image on the left and the text on the right. Uh, we got this background image, and if we look at the recent reviews on a smaller screen, the background image is gone and it collapses down to two boxes, and even smaller. 
it goes to uh, one box per row. And you can see if we go even smaller, the images themselves will even start to scale. So looking good. Our posts and comments sections looking good. Footers looking good. Uh, headers looking good, except when we click on the hamburger menu, nothing's happening, right? So we still need to add the JavaScript for this functionality here. When we click the hamburger menu, we get our menu. Click it again, it's gone. So other than that, it's pretty much wrapped up. So let's just quickly look at the JavaScript to accomplish that uh, hamburger menu functionality. So since it's only a little bit of JavaScript, I'll just go ahead and add it in the script tag at the bottom of the HTML. So if we come down here below the footer, let's add a script tag. And close the script tag. And then we're going to say document.get element by ID nav toggle. And we're going to add an event listener to that. It's going to be a click event. Set an anonymous function. And then inside of that click event, let's create a variable nav menu. And again, document.get element by ID nav menu container. Nav menu container is basically this entire container here that holds all of these hyperlinks, all these nav links. So let's get that element by ID and store it into this variable called nav menu. And then we'll say nav menu dot style dot display. And then we're going to do some kind of if else logic, some inline if else logic here. So if the nav menu's offset parent is equal to null, then it's hidden and we, we want it to show up, right? If it's presently hidden and then we click the hamburger menu, we want it to appear. So we'll set the display to block. If the offset parent is not null, we'll set the display to none. So when the offset parent is not null, that means it's currently visible. So right now, this is visible. The offset parent is not equal to null. So when we click this again, it's going to set it to none. And right now it's it's hidden, so the offset parent is currently null. So when we click it, we set it to display of block. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and save this, go to our work in progress over here, which right now it's not working right. If I refresh, there it is. Nav menu is working. Well, just a little bit of JavaScript, a few lines. Uh, and that's about it. Um, this video is already way too long. Um, in the future, I'll try to pick projects that are less complicated and maybe a little bit smaller so that we don't have a two hour video. Um, if you like this, uh, leave some comments. Let me know if I screwed anything up. Let me know if I could have written this code cleaner or tips and tricks for better ways of building it. Um, add a like, subscribe if you care to. I will keep putting out more HTML, CSS, JavaScript type like let's code this type tutorials. So thank you.